So uh, yeah, so I've been working with Gutenberg. Uh, I've built sites in Gutenberg. I use Gutenberg. Uh, and I know there's been, you know, uh, in the community when it first came out, you know, a lot of people were kind of questioning, you know, is this the direction we need to go? Uh, but ultimately, I think it's a, a wonderful tool, but I think it's important to understand uh, kind of its role in uh, WordPress space and kind of what the what the options are, as well as um, you know how you should best approach your uh, using Gutenberg. So, how many people right now use Gutenberg, and how many people have opted not to use Gutenberg for right now? Okay, uh, so it's kind of interesting. So, uh, you know, I was getting ready to talk, and I've done several Gutenberg talks, but I kind of uh, now that Gutenberg has been out for a while, and I, you know, I know that there's some people that have been holding off, uh, so been trying to figure out, you know, like, uh, should I introduce, uh, uh, you know, kind of the way I have before, or should I uh, emphasize some other things? So we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes here. But uh, for those that do want to kind of follow along with the slides, QR code is kind of small and distant maybe, but uh, you can scan that on your phone and it'll pull up the slides. Uh, I will uh, post these uh, on Twitter or uh, something after so um, but yeah so we're going to be talking about the the block editor for those that may not uh, let's turn this thing on let's try that again all right well it's just gonna stay on this slide apparently um, let's try this again There we are. All right, so for those that may not know what Gutenberg is, um, essentially it's the new editing experience in WordPress that came out in version 5.0. Uh, so it's been out uh, for a while now. Um, and ultimately, uh, I think for most people, uh, you know, Gutenberg uh, is either good or bad, right? Uh, some people like it, some people don't think it's so great. Uh, but really, I think what it boils down to is um, you know, most people who have been using WordPress for a long time uh, kind of gotten used to the way things are. And a lot of the new people that come into WordPress, they're like, oh, this thing is great. Um, so uh, I think it's kind of like, uh, what was it, Henry Ford said, uh, uh, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're right. Uh, so if you're willing to learn it and give it a try, I think it's a good thing. Um, you know, if you do happen to run into bugs, uh, you know, that's one of the things I, I do is I try to uh, contribute where I can and, and help uh, with Gutenberg and other things in WordPress core. And there's a great team of people that works on Gutenberg. So if you do run into issues, don't, don't be quiet about it. Uh, you know, uh, let us know. There's some support forums and there's a link here at the end too if you do run into issues where you can go and report them. Uh, and that way we can fix it and make it better. Um, so the goal with Gutenberg is essentially to make a new page and post building experience that will make writing posts effortless. Um, so ultimately, uh, this is kind of the classic editor experience that we've had up until uh, recently. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's limited, right? So you kind of have this big box that you can type into uh, and you can put images in and if you paste a URL for a, a video or something, it'll pop up and turn into a, an embedded video. So it's got some cool features in there. Uh, but ultimately, there's only so much you can do. So there's uh, one of the kind of primary goals with Gutenberg was to not have to require so many plugins to be installed to get things done in WordPress. So uh, most of the time we had things called short codes uh, that would add functionality and different things. But um, some of the most common reasons that people would install plugins and things was to, uh, you know, I, I want to be able to have buttons on my website uh, and easily put those in. Uh, you know, I want to have a table display of something on my website. I want to be able to do X, Y, Z. Um, and with just the standard editor, it's just not really an easy thing to do. Uh, so then, now we have Gutenberg. Uh, and it looks like it does less, because it looks like there's less on the screen. Uh, but ultimately, it's kind of a, uh, it's got a lot you can do. So this is the content area. And over to the right there, we have the document panel, which is not always visible. Sometimes it's hidden, so there's a little gear icon on the top right you can click that'll pop that little document panel out. Um, and that, 
uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, and then the little three dots, that's your uh, global menu. So there's a few options in there that you can use to uh, turn and uh, do things with Gutenberg. So one of the cool ones here is the full screen mode. So when you're editing a page in WordPress, one of the things uh, that Gutenberg does well is present you the same view in the admin as you get on the front end. But the limitation there is that you're kind of restricted uh, width uh, because of the sidebar and WordPress and all that. Full screen mode makes that go away and you can get a better idea as you're editing uh, what it's really going to look like on the front end, uh, you know, width wise and everything. So. Uh, and uh, so we have this thing called the inserter. So when you hover over a new block or in the top left corner there, we have a little plus icon. Uh, ultimately, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to add a new block. And this little guy here called the inserter will pop up. And so that is how you will insert blocks. Um, so you have all kinds of different blocks. Your most commonly used ones will show up there. Uh, off to the right, you'll see some little grayed out icons. Those are your top three most recently used or commonly used uh, blocks. And then, uh, you know, these, these items here will expand and collapse so you can see all the different types of blocks that you have. Uh, some plugins will add their own section. So if you have, uh, for example, there's a great plugin, uh, Rich Tabor uh, is here somewhere, uh, wrote, uh, called CoBlocks. And so it has its own section full of blocks, uh, awesome things that you can use. Um, but you can also uh, type the slash uh, and it will automatically pull up a list as well. So if you don't like to uh, take your hands off the keyboard, you could just type slash, start typing the name of a block, hit, uh, you know, enter when you're ready to accept that particular block, and it will put it in there, and then you can start typing content into that block. Uh, so it's a great little way, kind of a shortcut uh, to get content in quicker. So some of the design principles behind Gutenberg is that, again, you should see the same thing in the admin as you see on the front end. Uh, and when you're not actually editing a block, it should look the same way in the admin as it does on the front end. So when you have not selected a block to do anything with it, it should look exactly the way it will on the front end. And so this is an unselected block. Uh, after you click on it, you'll get some more UI and things around there uh, where you can actually uh, manipulate and work with that particular block. And so you'll see some extra things kind of pop up there at the top and the bottom. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about what those are. The first thing that happens though, uh, so if you look over to the right, we have that little document panel we pointed out at the beginning. When you click on it, that document panel switches over and becomes a uh, block settings panel. So it switches over to block mode. Uh, and what that is, those are all your options for that particular block that uh, don't really make sense to put over in the, in the content area. Uh, so if you wanted to, for example, add some alt text, that's not something you see when you're working with an image, so it makes sense to kind of have that off to the side. So every block uh, will have a block settings panel. Uh, some things obviously have more than others that you can edit. Um, and then we have this block toolbar at the top. Uh, so any block that you click on is going to have a toolbar uh, with some actions that you can take. Uh, one of the coolest ones um, that can often be overlooked is this uh, block transformation icon. And so when you click on that, if you, whatever type of block you may have, in this case, we have an image, uh, you click on that and it'll pop open your options for converting that block to some other thing. Uh, so in this case, you know, we can convert this image to a gallery, to a cover image, or even just a file. Uh, and so they'll have different uh, ways that we can render that image uh, or add to it uh, by converting it. Uh, so then the three dots is always our menu, essentially. So we had the global menu we saw earlier. This is the block menu. So each block has one of these. So if you're trying to add something before or after a particular block, you can always use this menu to do that. Um, if you want to edit this specific block as HTML, you can do that. Um, just a forewarning, certain blocks aren't really meant to be edited that way, and the image block is probably one of those. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. Um, so uh, you can also remove a block easily that way. Uh, so when you do have plugins, so plugins have a slightly different way in Gutenberg of working. Uh, and again, some of the plugin ecosystem is still trying to catch up to Gutenberg and catch up with kind of all the features that are available. Uh, but 
Uh, plugins will have this kind of icon in the top right. And so this is an example of the Yoast plugin, uh, which has stuff at the bottom, uh, but I think that's more out of convenience. For people that don't know, you can also click this button up here. Um, so that button up there, you click that, and it essentially opens up a panel that is just for that particular plugin. And so all the options and things that you can do with that particular plugin are available there. So in this case, uh, you know, it's going to scan your content for uh, potential SEO improvements, uh, and you'll be able to see that right there. Now, obviously, if you were to use the bottom panel in the traditional, like, sense, uh, it's inconvenient. It's always at the bottom. You have to scroll down. You can't look at your content and at the uh, results. But in this case, because we have this panel, uh, it makes that a little easier. Uh, so then we have... Uh, yeah, so we have uh, that icon, the gear icon uh, as well, which will drop down and show your plugins in there as well. Uh, so you can switch over uh, from the menu into the code editor, which will show you all the HTML. Uh, for those who are interested in how the markup is affected, uh, there's comments at the beginning and end of each block, so you can kind of see what the blocks are uh, when you're looking at it. So if for some reason you wanted to go in and edit some stuff, um, then that's kind of what you'll see. And you can toggle that back and forth. Uh, if you do run into um, content that you need to convert over, I think Gutenberg actually kind of does this automatically now, so you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, but if you do ever have a classic block and you're, you're kind of stuck and trying to figure out how do I get this to be the normal Gutenberg stuff, um, you can always uh, use that menu uh, off of the toolbar there, or the uh, block there. And it, it that particular classic block has one, is the only one that can do it, but it, it says switch to, or convert blocks, and so it'll convert it into other blocks. Um, so now I want to kind of give you a live demo of some of the features and things that you can do. So one of the things that's uh, interesting about Gutenberg is that a lot of people, uh, they kind of think of it as a page builder, um, and it sort of is, um, but it's not, and it's you know, headed that direction, and maybe one day it's going to be a full-fledged thing. Uh, but right now, it's not necessarily a page builder replacement. right? So the idea right now is that it's just a richer way for you to enter content into your website. So you think of your standard content that you probably enter normally. You might have blobs of text, some images, maybe a, a few headings and things to break up so that it doesn't look too blobby. Um, <laughs> when people are reading it so they can scan a little better, right? Uh, but ultimately, you know, the web is about having a rich experience. SEO uh, is better when you have, you know, more media and things associated with it. Um, but really, it's just about creating a better, uh, uh, more rich experience for users. So we're in Atlanta, and around the corner is the Coca-Cola headquarters. Uh, so we're going to create a little page uh, for... Coca-Cola here, uh, just to kind of demonstrate some of the features and how this works. So we're going to create a new block, and this will be, uh, let's see, so we have something called a cover block. Uh, and so what this does is it allows you to take some image or thing from your media library and insert it in. And we can say, you know, Atlanta. home of Coca-Cola. Uh, and at first, this doesn't look all that amazing. Um, what we might want to do is convert this to a heading, make the text look a little better. Uh, anything that supports Gutenberg uh, will allow you to not just have content within a restricted area, but allow you to expand that to, uh, to be wide or even full screen. Uh, so we can do that. Uh, if you have an image where, where the focus matters, uh, there's this cool little focal point picker where you can move that around and it'll change the focus of, of where that is on the image. And then uh, if we wanted to maybe give this more of a uh, white overlay, we could do that. Maybe we wanted, because this is Coke, we wanted it to be a little more red. We could do that. Uh, maybe not so much uh, red, just a little less. Uh, so you can adjust a lot of these things. Uh, we can also do a fixed background, which is going to give it that kind of cool parallax uh, scrolling effect. Um, and then we can take a look at some of the other blocks here. 
So let's do, uh, so you, again, we can type slash and that'll pop up your thing here. So without leaving the keyboard, uh, you know, we can, we can do that. Uh, let's do a media plus text. So one of the common things that was kind of difficult in the normal editors just to get an image and put content next to it. Um, so in this case, we're gonna take an image and stick it in here. And then it automatically is gonna kind of give us some larger text here. Uh, you can change the size of the text uh, by choosing the font size or changing the number over here. Um, you can put some content in there. We can even add in a new button. Uh, we can say, get it now. Uh, and so we have um, the ability to, to also change the style of the buttons. So in this case we have uh, here, we can do square or rounded edges, or we can say we wanna kinda have more of an outline feel to it. And then we can even change the, uh, the text color here to you know, be the, the red color that matches everything else. Now, of course, there's a very specific uh, Coke red, but we're not worried about that right now. Um, so yeah, so it, uh, you know, kind of gives it, now you'll see this is kind of butted up against here. So maybe we want to uh, insert something before. You can use this guy here. Um, you can also, if you're hovering, uh, there uh, a lot of times is a, um, a little plus icon that you'll see here that you can hit. That'll also work for inserting something between two things. Uh, so in this case, we're just gonna put in a spacer. A spacer is cool because you can just uh, drag it and make it have as much space as you want. It shows you in gray, but of course that's the selected state. So when you click away, it's the unselected, what you'll see on the front end. And it can give you the control to give the space that you want without having to do anything too complicated. Um, so then we have some other cool uh, blocks in here. So let's do a pull quote. Uh, if I could give the world a Coke. Uh, I think it was Bill Backer that actually did that. Um, so here, uh, again, we have some styles, different styles that we can pick. So in this case, we have kind of the default, but we can do a solid color background. Uh, you know, maybe we want to go with that red color again, just to make it look, you know, we can't go off brand. Client would get real mad if we did that. So, um, and we want to have white text. And again, we still have the ability to send these things full screen or maybe just do kind of a wide version. Uh, there's also some really cool features with um, columns, for example. Uh, so one of the things that could be super difficult in the traditional editor is just getting two images side by side. Uh, in this case, this uh, uh, gives you the ability to do some interesting things. So you can do uh, columns. And so right now, by default, um, we have two columns. And so let's put in uh, some content. Uh, hi there. Uh, so <clears throat> these particular um, blocks, let's see. The one thing that I have found it is a little difficult to, uh, to do, which I would like to get fixed is to actually um, get to the column screen. So what I found though is that you actually, this little gray thing here, if you can click on the gray, uh, it'll let you get to the column block screen, which is this over here. So, the, so right now we have two columns. Let's say we wanna do, bump that up to four. And let's, uh, let's actually make ourselves a image. So this will be a traditional image. We'll choose something. So we got some cool icons here that we can use. So we can drop these in and align them to the center. And we can insert a few of these guys uh, from the media library. 
and it gives us the ability to do some cool little layouts that you would definitely not be able to do very easily otherwise. So I kind of wanted to, I, I realize that this part could be very boring if I'm just, you're watching me, but uh, kind of wanted to show off, you know, some cool things they can do and, and, you know, do it live so that you can see it's not that difficult. And sometimes when you put it in a slideshow, you easily uh, skip over the details. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, and, and so you can insert text down here, uh, you know, get help. Um, uh, what is this one? Uh, graduate. <laughs> Give back. Uh, be a star. Um, and so, you know, you might want to also center the text here to match up with your icons so that everything looks nice. Um, yeah, so you get the ability to, to kind of create these cool little layouts. Uh, let's see, one of the other things is, uh, let's see, we need some filler text in here. Let's get some lorem ipsum. I should really have a uh, shortcut that just fills in lorem ipsum for me, but I always find myself just copying it from somewhere like this. Um, so we'll put in a few, uh, few bits of that in here. Let's see. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and put in a gallery. Actually, I'm going to put in a regular image uh, just so you can see kind of how this works. So images are something that people deal with a lot. And I think uh, it, it can be difficult if you've not done that before. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's just take a, I think this one's, well, that one's bigger. This one's much bigger. Stick that one in. So this is a really big image. Uh, so. Let's say we wanted to wrap text around this image, uh, but it's too big for anything to wrap around it. Uh, you can click to show it at 50%, 25%, 75%. Uh, or if it's not quite what you want, you can just drag it uh, to change it, uh, to get it right where you want, to get all the words to line up however you want. Uh, so that's, that's nice. So let's just take a quick look at what we've got before we go any further. And let's view the page. So this is what we've created so far. So you can see we got a cool little parallel uh, parallax thing going on. So we got all our bubblies at the top. Uh, we've got the uh, mobile app, get it now. Um, we've got a nice little thing here, cool little icons underneath. And then, the, you know, uh, there's our uh, thing here. So we can come back here and say, oh, you know, Actually, what I really want is a gallery. So let's use our block transform and we'll take this to a gallery uh, and we're going to center it here. Obviously, we need to add more images. So we could upload an image here. We could drag stuff into it. Uh, and this is uh, anytime you have an image, typically you'll see this little uh, pencil icon and that's how you'll kind of just click on it and then come in to add new things to the gallery. So you could um, Click on, I don't know, a few things here. Um, let's put a bunch of stuff in for now. And of course, in this screen, this is where you can easily just kind of rearrange things. So if you know you want to kind of spread out uh, certain things, you can do that. Hit update. And so here we have uh, three columns in our gallery. And we can also, uh, you know, drag this slider or use the up and down keys to change that. So anytime that there's kind of an odd, uh, you know, you have four columns and there's kind of this odd number, like right now we have six, it's going to take the extra things and put it at the bottom and kind of even those things out. Uh, so it, it kind of makes it look pretty cool in my opinion. Um, but yeah, you can, you can take it to five and you'll have one big one and five small uh, or however you want to do that. So obviously you have control on how many things are in there and uh, exactly how many columns you end up with. So uh, let's do two and we'll leave it like this here. So, uh, so let's see what happens if we save that and we come over here and refresh. Um, so we've got our 
our uh, gallery here. So what does this look like when we size it down to a mobile screen, for example? So if I were to take this down and size it down, size it down, you know, what happens with this guy um, is when you hit a certain point, is it going to stay? That one stays. If we have a gallery, and we go down, it'll, whoops, it'll, it's all relatively good at being responsive. There are certain cases in which um, things will stack. I think I zoomed in there. There we are. Um, so, uh, yeah, and our columns look like they get a little interesting there on small screen, but, uh, but yeah, so it's going to give you the ability to uh, do a lot more than you would normally be able to do without extra tools in WordPress. So, uh, and you still have the ability to take a video and paste it in somewhere. So you can paste in the URL and it will still do its WordPress thing and, and link it up. Or um, one of the beautiful things about the whole idea of this inserter is that um, when you have uh, blocks, there's no guessing as to what you have available, right? So everything can be found. Uh, and so you can just click here. And let's say you know you want to embed something. Uh, you know, there's YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you can even embed from other WordPress sites. Uh, so there's all kinds of things you can do. Uh, maybe you know you want to embed a video, uh, but you, d you don't know what video options there are. Uh, so now it's going to show you everything that could possibly contain a video. Uh, so you could even have a video with text to the side. Uh, you can embed a YouTube video. Uh, so in, in the case of uh, this, these are, this is essentially a placeholder where you can just plop in your URL and when you hit embed, it's going to do the same thing. So obviously it would be easier to uh, just paste in the URL um, and have it plop it in for you, but that works. Uh, another thing you can do, uh, so I have in the clipboard the link for the video. Uh, one of the cool features is that you can just highlight some text. And then when you use your keyboard to paste, uh, it actually will take that highlighted text and automatically turn that into a link. Uh, so now that's all you have to do to get a link on the page. Um, you also have the ability to... Um, uh, it's... Oh, you, what do you mean? Like... Uh, you highlighted it and you pasted the link. Yep. It made it a link rather than replacing it with the With that, URL. correct. Yeah, so it'll take whatever you've highlighted and convert that into a link, pasting whatever you paste is the, yeah, is the URL. Um, so then we have, uh, this is our block navigation. So if you happen to have a really long page and you're trying to figure out where something is, uh, you don't have to guess, uh, you can just click and it'll take you straight to that block. Uh, so when you do have long nested things, um, you know, it's, it's easier to find what you're looking for. So uh, you also have um, kind of this informational helper here. It'll tell you about how many words you have on the page, uh, how many headings, paragraphs, total number of blocks. It also shows you kind of this nested structure. Um, and it'll even highlight things if you uh, get headings out of order, for example, uh, you know, that can make a difference with SEO and things like that. Uh, and it'll, it'll notify you um, if you click over here and take a look. Uh, let's see, some of the other things that it does. So in this case, uh, you know, we have red and white, which is, um, can be difficult for people to read. And so this is kind of an accessibility thing, but you can see here that it says this color combination may be hard for people to uh, be able to read. Try using a darker background or a brighter text color. Um, so when it detects that you've got kind of this uh, ratio that's off, uh, it'll tell you. Um, 
So yeah, so that is kind of the quick rundown of Gutenberg. Uh, one more thing that is very helpful. So obviously it took us a little while to kind of create this whole um, structure here with all the columns and everything. Um, so one of the things that you can do, let's say uh, we have a particular block, something like this here that we want to use again. Uh, we can come to the block menu and click add two reusable blocks and we can just give it a name uh, let's call it mobile app or something uh, so we can then save this and now this is a block called mobile app and uh, so then what we can do is we can take the uh, we can go to create a new page for example well maybe we'll save what we did um, so we're going to create a new page and what we'll do is we'll, you know, call this uh, test or something. And so now when we come in to uh, essentially add a new item, uh, one of the things that you'll see is we have this reusable section. Uh, so this is where any reusable blocks that you've saved live. Uh, and so you can see that we have mobile app. It's even going to kind of give us a preview here of what we've created. And so then when we click it, it's going to insert that into our page and we can then, you know, use that uh, to start creating other pages. So uh, this can be very helpful, um, especially if you've got uh, content that you want to manage from one place. Um, so you can come up to the, um, to the menu here and come to manage all reusable blocks. And it's going to take you to the section here where you can see all your blocks that are reusable that you've created. So now, you can actually click in and manage this block from one place and it will affect the entire website. Uh, so if you do have, for example, uh, you know, something that you want to use across the whole site, uh, it just makes it really easy. Uh, so part of the direction that Gutenberg is going is, is in a direction where uh, ultimately the goal is to give you the ability to edit your own theme. So as you can see, if you have something like man uh, reusable blocks, you would be able to create your own header and that header would be applied to the entire site but you have a place now where you could come to edit it. Uh, you could create a footer and that footer could go wherever you want it. Uh, but at the same time you could have multiple headers and you could say well these pages are going to use this header and these pages are going to use that header. Um, and so you, could, you can start to work it that way. So you can see how you know as Gutenberg starts to grow just beyond uh, managing the content block uh, how that can give you a lot more power and control uh, and actually a lot more flexibility. Uh, I think one of the biggest questions that most people ask when they get, first get started with WordPress is, what theme should I use? Well, it won't be long and, the, and th that question will go away. There's no need to use a theme necessarily. Uh, you can just do whatever you need to with Gutenberg. So, uh, so that's kind of the direction that we're headed. Um, and we have time for questions, so if you have questions, Yeah, so being able to just like create one page where you can do a search across a bunch of different media types. So creating the page itself and laying things out is one thing. The functionality, we still are going to need plugins. Um, so there's always, uh, and that's the thing is that there's a clear should be a clear distinction between themes and plugins. Themes being the display of content, and that's all that they do. I think. A lot of themes in WordPress do too much already. They try to control functionality. Um, and in some cases, people like to have that bundle where everything's just together. Uh, but ultimately, if you want to move away from that theme to something else, you don't want to lose your functionality either. So that's the problem that a lot of people run into. Um, so yeah, plugins are always going to be necessary. In my opinion, you can lay out the page, but the functionality of doing the searches and all that kind of stuff uh, is plug-in territory. So, yes. I kind of have two questions. One is uh, with the columns. Can you do nested columns? So, like, if you want one big one on the left and two small ones on the right. Um, I haven't tested that, but you should be able to. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, he was asking about columns. If you could do, uh, for example, nested columns. Um, 
And to be honest, I haven't really toyed around with that too much. Um, but here we have a column and we can do another column. And that column has two columns inside of it. So yeah, you can, you can get complicated if you want. Uh, obviously at some point you go too far nesting, it's going to look weird, but yeah. <laughs> Second question, I'm sorry. Is, sorry. Um, when you showed the front end, you, skip, you kind of scrolled down to show what you had worked on in the main content area. Mm -hmm. But if you go above and below, how do you, I mean, it, custom CSS, is that the only way to hide? So the question is, how can you get rid of the header footer if you want full control of the page? Um, there's a great little plugin uh, a friend of mine put together called Blank Slate that will get rid of the header and the footer. Um, yeah, I would have demoed it, but I realized, and I was helping him write some of the code for it, I realized that it doesn't actually work that great with Gutenberg because it strips out some of the styles, so I got to go fix that, but, uh, you know, uh, I'll fix it. So, uh, other questions? Yes. Uh, blank Slate. So that is a good question. And so the question is, how does Gutenberg integrate with other page builders? And that is exactly why I have uh, another page builder that I can turn on. So I've got Elementor here. So I'm gonna turn it on and just tell it I don't need to read the guide. Uh, so we'll come to our page. And so as you can see, we've edited this page here with Gutenberg uh, and then it says, you know, edit with Elementor. So a lot of these page builders, they're going to have their own interface for doing that. Uh, and so you can click edit with Elementor and it's going to spit you out on the front end. Uh, and so anything that you've created in Gutenberg is just HTML content. It may look a little different, um, not have all the exact styles or whatnot. So you may have to kind of tweak it a little bit. Generally, you don't want to take content, edit it in Gutenberg, edit it in the page builder, and then go back to try to edit it in the other. That's not going to work very well. So it's best to start in one thing and, and go from there. Ultimately, the nice thing is you can use the page builder on certain pages and Gutenberg on other pages and that will work perfectly. So uh, a friend of mine actually does this uh, page builder breakdown. He installed at one point eight entirely different page builders and he was able to use all of them uh, together. Uh, so it should work pretty well theoretically. So question in the back. A good, okay, yeah, what is a good uh, place to go for training for Gutenberg for clients? Um, I would say give them a place where they can play with it. Uh, there, I think it might still be up. There's this thing called Frontenberg. Uh, .com, I think. Hopefully I'm not going to some, I probably shouldn't just do that on the, but it's called Frontenberg. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, yes. Okay, so we got Last question. time for one more question. So yeah, there's Frontenberg and uh, there's a link. Uh, so when I post the slides at the very end, there's some resources for training uh, and how-tos. So question. Uh, can you go back again and show how you got to the cover block and the medium text block? Okay, yeah. So how did I get to the uh, image or the uh, median text block as well as the... Um, what was the other one? Cover block. Cover block. Okay. Yeah. So ultimately, all of the blocks of any kind are going to live in here. So if you just search cover, it's going to pull up the cover block uh, or media. As long as you remember the names, uh, <laughs> uh, you should be able to pull them up and then click enter and then it'll, it'll plop you in there. And then you should be able to start creating those content. So. Uh, Oh yeah, the parallax. So essentially all that is when you're on this, uh, this block is you just toggle on the fixed background. Uh, so if it's not fixed, the image will scroll with everything. But if it's fixed, uh, then it kind of gives you that cool, the image stays put, everything else moves effect. So, uh, but I think that was all the questions we have. Um, I will be around uh, in the green shirt, uh, wherever. Uh, feel free to find me, ask questions. Uh, there is a, a happiness bar that should be open to if people have questions or need specific help. Uh, there will be people to help. So, appreciate it. <laughs>